What's going on, YouTube? Got kind of lucky today and found a dozen of these. Was absolutely shocked. Um, I haven't found anything at that Walmart in so long. So when I came across these, I figured I would uh, go ahead and scalp them. I'm sure a lot of you are going to hate that, but I really couldn't care less. Um, about 12 of them. I'm going to keep one or two, sell 10 of them, or 11 maybe. And uh, I'm going to sell them for whatever the market is dictating right now, which isn't much, but it should uh, should be double the money, at least. Pretty cool casting, though. I like it. I like that it's not overdone with camo. But uh, collectors will, or not collectors, customizers will be all over a lot of 10 of these. Because, you know, the most customized cars seem to be the Datsun 510 sedan, the Datsun 510 wagon, the Chevy Gasser, and the 83 Silverado. Those are your top four customized castings right now. <coughs> so I'm sure somebody will be all over that lot. And uh, if not, if I, if I get my money back on them, so be it. Not a big deal. Anyways, uh, I did a video last night and then my iPad every month or two, it acts up and I have to reset it. Like it won't let me upload any, any content because of the something with the browser. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so I have to reset my, my iPad every month to two months. So the video was lost, <coughs> which in a way is okay because I have another video coming tomorrow that uh, part of that video I can now correlate with the video tomorrow. But uh, I'm going to do the other part of that video. And it's not, there's not a lot of stuff to show. Uh, this is one of those Ertl American Muscle like super detailed cars this is just an old uh, Chevy Nova you can see all the detail that these things have opening trunk opening hood and what they put underneath the hood on these things is it's really impressive for a car this size so that was the first one I had, the uh, Nova. I don't remember where I got this one, but I did get it. And then I found, <coughs> there's a vendor <coughs> at uh, the antique mall that I go to that has, I think he has like 15 of the, fifteen for sale at a time. And then when, when you buy one and you go back a week later, he's replaced it. So I'm just chipping away, grabbing one at a time this was the second one that i got this is the uh, mercury cougar top eliminator and this thing is sweet looking it's a beast it's probably my favorite uh one to 64 scale cougar i think i would take this over the auto world although if auto world ever put it in their premium line I'm sure that one would probably edge this one out. But uh, having it in their deluxe line gives, to me, gives this one, a, I think, a pretty, pretty big edge. So um, the, the engine on this one is really nice. One of the nicer one to 64 scale engines I think I've seen it's hard to get the light right but 
really really nice detail nice color nice paint nice graphics the only weakness on these cars or the only like real criticism I would have is the wheels they are way too cheap for the car in my opinion but uh, everything else is really really nice uh, so the one that I picked up yesterday is this 1962 Pontiac and it is awesome and this one here I think uh, you know these wheels on this one are a lot nicer but it's an easier wheel to do doing just a basic steel wheel uh, but this car, I know my my camera is going to have a hard time with the color, but this car is pretty unbelievable. It is really nice. Now, one of the downfalls of these having, having opening hoods and trunks is that uh, the trunks sometimes don't close and line up the way they should. But other than that... Um, I love this casting. I don't think anyone else has done a 62 Catalina. Uh, what was the uh, Johnny Lightning? I think that was like a later, a, little, a few years later. But I love this casting. It's a real heavy casting. And these have plastic bases. So, But the weight of this car feels like a metal, metal body, metal chassis. And you can even hear setting it down. It's a pretty substantial car. And the Cougar is pretty much the same way. The Nova's significantly lighter, but really cool car. So I picked that one up. And then uh, a couple of videos ago, I picked this up. This is a Miho exclusive Chevy Blazer. So it's an exclusive, but it's there's more of these made than just the regular ones that you find at Toys R Us. Those are about twelve fifty. This one is eighteen hundred. But it's an exclusive color, so you're not going to find this one anywhere except for from a, a hobby exclusive or a hobby authorized dealer like M&J Toys, for example. But uh, I like this one. I like the uh, black on black colorway. They also did uh, Miho exclusive Gone Fishing with this casting. It's basically the same truck, but it has a white top. That one is also an exclusive. So a really cool truck, but a, the big criticism I had with this truck is the radial tires. And uh, I'm going to get into that as soon as I show this next car. Um, I Yesterday, we were out briefly and poked our heads into a Toys R Us across town that I had, I had never been to. I didn't even know it was there. And I found some really cool stuff. I was kind of... It, it's frustrating because I live literally a minute and a half drive from Toys R Us. It's practically a stone throw away and uh, I never ever get stuff like this at my Toys R Us so to see an abundance of it at another Toys R Us just hanging on the pegs is pretty frustrating but uh, this is from the new Johnny Lightning release it's a 73 Charger to me this is a casting that uh, it's an oddball casting, so that's why I feel like I have to get it. There's, I don't think anybody else does a 73 in this scale. It's a lot like the 73 GTO that Johnny Lightning also does. You know, everybody has the 69 and the 70 on both the GTO and the Charger, but when you start getting into those mid 70s where they started getting real big and kind of ugly looking nobody casts those except Johnny Lightning so it's a very uh, unique casting 
you can tell um, that it's a round two product because they're using Racing Champ wheels on the car, which, you know, they interchange not just wheels between the two brands, but also toolings. Uh, that Ford truck that came out in the Gone Fishing is a Racing Champs tooling. So not uncommon for them to intermingle tools and parts. But uh, this is a factory color for this car. That's one thing. That actually, I think a lot of people probably don't know this. When Johnny Lightning relaunched, it was, gosh, I think it was the early 90s. Um, that was their big thing. If you look at the, the castings back then, they were hideous. They were very unlifelike. Um, but one thing that they did that I think a lot of collectors gravitated towards, a lot of old car guys who had those cars as kids was the fact that they stuck with factory colors. And so that that's a Johnny Lightning trait that goes it goes back. Um, so it's nothing new. It's it's cool to see Johnny Lightning doing that. It's cool to see Auto World. Auto World does that as well. And uh, Greenlight does it as well on uh, not probably not everything, but on a lot of stuff. And you know, I think even Hot Wheels does that to an extent on a lot of their castings. Um, the blue Raptor that came out last year uh, with that, with the 20, I think it was the 2016, or it might have been the 2017 Mustang. And then it was a three car trio that all came out in that Ford blue, the Ford Raptor, the Mustang, and the GT40. That's a real Ford color. So even Hot Wheels does that. It's not something that's exclusive to premium brands, let alone Johnny Lightning. But it is cool to see the brands try to stay true to the, to the manufacturer. So anyways, I wanted to talk a little bit about these radial tires because this being a 4x4, it should not have radial tires. And so I know nobody at round two is going to be watching this. But if by some chance you are, you do work for round two, and you are watching this, please don't put radials on any more of your 4x4s, please. Radials belong on muscle cars, and that's about it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe just a, an average street car. But for trucks, gotta go with the BF Goodrich. So I picked this up as part of the uh, the Toys R Us haul. Stand by because I want to grab a couple more things to show. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna show first of all. A casting that's been a huge hit for Johnny Lightning this year. Everybody was stoked when they came out with it, and rightfully so. It's one of their most awesome castings, but uh, it was a huge hit, and it's this International Scout, okay? You pick your color. They all have the same wheels and tires, so these are Goodyear Wrangler All-Terrains. As you can see, it's an authentic licensed tire. And it's an off-road tire. It's a great tire for a truck or an SUV. So it's the right choice. It does have a relatively aggressive off-road tread pattern. And these little details matter to me as a collector. Okay, this is why I stopped collecting Hot Wheels. Because I decided I wanted to focus on... The premium detailed stuff and part of that is getting the details right and when you put radial tires that are basically slicks okay these don't have any tread on them on a truck it just doesn't jive and it's a shame because it's a great looking truck other than 
the fact that it has slicks on it. It's very noticeable, even in such a small scale, just the tread, you know, the sidewall tread that you can clearly make out, even with the naked eye, on the International Scout compared to the Chevy Blazer. So, Johnny Lightning has two different off-road tires in their repertoire, so to speak, in their um, catalog with the BF Goodrich All-Terrain TAs and the Goodyear Wrangler All-Terrains. So there's no reason to put radial slicks on a truck. All right, I'm gonna end it at that and I'm gonna talk about the trucks. Personally, I like the BF Goodrich tires more than the Goodyear Wranglers. I think that they look better. I think they're a higher rated off-road tire, which, you know, in this case doesn't really matter because this is more of a cosmetic thing. Um, and, you know, these tires look good. Green Light uses the, the uh, Goodyear Wrangler all-terrains on a lot of their Jeep Wranglers and probably some of their pickups as well. So it's... It's a cool tire. I can't believe I'm sitting here talking about tires on toy cars. But uh, it, it, to me, it really matters. But uh, the BF Goodrich All-Terrain TAs, I actually have these tires on my, on my truck that I drive to work every day. Um, I've had them on a couple previous trucks that I've owned. And in my opinion, I've had other tires. I've had the Goodyear Wrangler all-terrains. I've had the Yokohama all-terrains. None of those even come close to comparing. That's just my opinion. Um, so I was pretty stoked when I saw these tires on this truck. But what also makes them look so good is these steel wheels with the chrome hubcaps. This truck in general looks pretty fantastic. I mean, it's a great looking truck. Let's well, see, I'm pretty sure that these are the same tires. The only difference is the stamping. But the tread pattern's the same. The point is, is that they're both off-road tread tires and you're gonna do a truck or an SUV you can't put slicks on it that's that's the point I'm trying to make but I was very surprised to see these hanging on the pegs as well just because I haven't had any luck finding any of these Johnny Lightning releases the only one I found I found all the first from 2016. God, those things are still all over the place. They're peg warmers. They're crappy cars, crappy castings. And it's a good thing Johnny Lightning seemed to figure that out very quickly because this year they've been pumping out some awesome castings with the Firebird um, Trans Am and the Fox Body Mustang. Even though that's a mediocre Fox Body, it's still really cool that they brought it out. The F-150 was a phenomenal release. It was an epic choice and fantastic execution on that truck. Um, the 73 Charger, awesome. The El Camino, it's, you know, not great, but it's much better than what we had last year with the Catalina. And what else did we have? Um, the Super B Convertible. Uh, just awful castings. And half of those had plastic tires on them. So I'm glad that they figured out quickly to get to what people want. And the next step of that is to bring back some of your import stuff. Bring back the Hondas. Bring back the Acuras. Bring back the Nissans. You already did that with the, the 260. But continue that... And if you're, if you're not going to do that, then go to the other popular castings you have. The Toyota Land Cruisers. Um, the 81 Malibus. They have so many unique castings. The 95 Impala. Uh, the old Caprice. All that kind of stuff. They have so many cars that they could pump out and that wouldn't sit there and hang on the pegs for months and months on end. 
It's been over a year on a lot of those cars from last year. Which is probably why my Toys R Us never got these. Because it still has all the other junk from last year that nobody wants. Target had to close them out at like a dollar dollar ninety eight or something like that. And they still took a month to sell. So anyways, that's my rant. I'm glad that Johnny Light Lightning is uh, doing stuff like this. Um, this actually is the second time we've seen this truck since Johnny Lightning relaunched. Almost two years ago now. The first time it came out was right here. This was the Series 1 Gone Fishing. Same tooling. And the Gone Fishing, it's a, a, always a three vehicle release, and then there's two versions. So you have version A, version B, which is either two color variations or a lot of times you'll have a clean version or a stock version and then you'll have a rusted version which is kind of what you have here just a real weathered truck but still really good execution on it and see even if you're not gonna do the off-road tires at least this truck doesn't have slicks on it but you can really see how much better the off-road tires look because the sidewall tread is visible from the side of the truck without with this one it looks like slicks until you look underneath so I'm glad that they went the route that they did with that truck Anyway, so those are the uh, interesting finds from uh, yesterday. Now, I do have some stuff showing up tomorrow. Um, quite, quite a bit of stuff, actually. For, I think I have six, six different pieces showing up. And uh, I'm excited to show you guys what they are. I don't think, I don't think any of them. Well, okay, of the six, I've seen two of them reviewed on YouTube. The other four have not yet been reviewed on YouTube, at least not that I've seen. And I follow all the major channels, so the only one that might have is Race Grooves. I don't watch that channel too much. Um, but they're exclusives, and I don't think he does a lot of exclusives. He only reviews the stuff that Round 2 sends to him, as far as I know. So I'm pretty sure that four of the six uh, cars and trucks that I'm getting tomorrow is going to be stuff you haven't seen. And I'm really excited to get, to get that stuff, uh, just to get it into my collection, but to get it out of the packaging and take a close look at it. Because I've been, you know, when stuff is referred to as highly anticipated, that's how I have felt waiting for the vehicles that are on their way to me. And uh, as far as the tracking goes, they are going to be here tomorrow. So it, it's not, uh, you know, depending on the post office, like it was last week, the post office actually did their job the way they're supposed to. The seller paid for priority shipping two to three days, and the post office actually got it done for a change. So I shouldn't say that. They get it right most of the time. But last week, I had a package delayed for three days because they sent it from Iowa to Mississippi, and then they had to resend it out here to Arizona. So, anyways, that's the video. Sorry there was such a huge emphasis on tires, but to me, that kind of stuff is important. 
And obviously, Johnny Lightning thinks it's important, too, because if they didn't, they wouldn't go out and get Goodyear licensing or BF Goodrich licensing. The fact that they do that shows you that they care. And so if that's the case and you care some of the time, why don't you care all the time? This was just somebody's bad idea. That's the only thing I can think of. Slicks on a truck. But all right, well thanks for checking it out. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's video should be 30 minutes. It might go a little longer than that. I, I'm just gonna do it all in one video, I think. I might split actually I might split it up into two. Now that I think about it, I think that would be a better way to go. So until then, you all have a good Monday. Don't work too hard. And I will holler at you mañana noche. I know I'm saying that wrong, but that means tomorrow night. <laughs>